Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Applied Energistics tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be discussing the ME Quantum Ring. This is the a very high-level uh, device that allows uh, two networks, no matter how far apart they are in the world, to be connected together and function as though they are one network. Okay? So because of that, it's got some pretty high energy requirements, and it's pretty expensive to make. So let's get into this right away. There's a lot to talk about. The first and most obvious components are the ME quantum rings themselves. Now, this is a multi-block structure. So you're going to need eight of these to make one ring. The problem is you need to build two of these things because you need one at both ends of the wireless connection. So if you want to set the system up, you're going to need 16 of these ME quantum rings. Okay? And they're not cheap. To craft an ME quantum ring, you need an energy cell, two logic processors, an engineering processor, and an ME dense cable, and, that, and four iron ingots, and that only gets you one ring. Now, it's not the most expensive thing in the universe, but you are using quite a bit of diamonds and everything for each one of these uh, rings, so it's not the cheapest thing ever. And of course, dense cable is itself not all that cheap. It just adds up with how much stuff you've got to craft, okay? So lots of processors. Uh, to craft these. So once you have 16 ME quantum rings, uh, we can, you can get into the business of uh, quantuming it up. Now, you also need this, the ME quantum link chamber. Uh, it forms the center of this uh, multi-block, and uh, it holds the singularity, which we'll get to in a minute. The link chamber is very easy to build. It's simply four quartz glass and four fluix pearls, and you only need one of these per setup, so you only need two of these in order to set this thing up. Now you need this thing, the quantum entangled singularity. Remember in our last episode, we looked at the matter condenser and how it lets you craft a singularity with 256,000 energy uh, put into a 4K energy storage component. Now, you need to craft one of these things. Now, thankfully, you don't need to craft two. You only have to craft one singularity. And you also need some ender dust. Okay, so ender dust, you need to just grind ender pearls. Uh, there's a number of mods and a number of different ways to grind ender pearls depending on which mod you have installed. Uh, it's important to note that there's that the portal gun mod has its own ender dust, and uh, according to the AE2 website, and this doesn't work. Okay, so you need to get yourself some ender dust. This is ender dust from Applied Logistics 2, so we know it's going to work. Okay, then you need to do something in the world. You need a source of an explosion. It can actually be any kind of an explosion. You can be, you can use TNT. Uh, it can be a creeper. It could be, a, I guess, an RPG if you've got a mod that adds those. Applied Energistics has its own little bit of TNT. It's called Tiny TNT. This has been added in order to um, make this quantum link chamber thing possible, even on servers where they've banned TNT. Uh, it's crafted simply with two gunpowder and two quartz dust. And what Tiny TNT does is just creates an explosion without blowing anything up. Um, well, if they have it turned off. So uh, it's been created so that server admins can uh, disable explosions and this will still work. So we've got our TNT placed down. We just need to throw our singularity on the ground, throw some ender dust on it. I'm going to use a button. I can't actually stick a button straight to a block of TNT. Make an explosion. Okay, you only need one ender dust. And, uh, and that will give us two quantum entangled singularities. Now, this is important because these are paired up. All right? So what the mod author recommends and what you can actually do then is you can go into an anvil. This is a very damaged anvil. I'm not sure why I grabbed that out of uh, the creative inventory. You can actually name these things. Okay? So I can get rid of the name quantum entangled singularity, and I can say test singularity one or something like that pull it out and now it's called test singularity one and i can name it something else this one and i can call it test singularity two basically what you want to do just to try and keep things clear is to name your singularities so that you know which ones go together you could you know give it a name as to what base you're connecting it to or what doesn't matter but the point is that these link chambers can only link to one other place so for every connection you want to make between disparate uh, networks, you need two of these things. Um, and that's that 
quantum entangled singularity that allows you to do that. Okay? These can't stack anymore. Now we need to actually build this thing. It's actually pretty darn easy to build. 21 dirt. Um, to add on to your network. However, it does have some pretty hefty power requirements, which I'll mention in just a moment. So in order to build this thing, all you need to do, and I could run some cable just to make this um, a bit cleaner, is place your quantum ring blocks in a ring. You need to place it in a 3x3 three three ring with an empty space in the middle, and then place the quantum link chamber in the middle of that. Okay? Now, that, then that'll make it form into a multi-block, and that'll allow it to connect to power. Before, before that, it, it won't actually uh, connect to power. Now you've got these little blue lights on. It means it's getting, uh, it's built and it's getting power. Now what we need to do is build the other one. So I've got these two networks set up. If you remember from the previous video, this network is storing gold nuggets, iron nuggets, and paintballs. And I've built this tiny little network over here, and it's storing some delicious cake and some delicious cookies. Now... Obviously, if your network set is close together, this doesn't make any sense. But if these were thousands and thousands and thousands of blocks apart, uh, this would make more sense. But this is just a demonstration, you know. Don't get too um, into it. So let's just build this one over here. Now you'll notice there's no connection to the corners. Uh, to connect power to this thing, you need to connect your power cables to one of the uh, cardinal directions, not to these uh, corners. Now in order to make this work, because if we look at our network, we can still only see the cookies and cakes. And if we look at this network, we can still only see the, uh, the nuggets, ingots, and the paintballs. What we need to do is we need to place our quantum entangled singularities in our quantum link chamber. So I'll place test singularity one in here. And then I'll go over here and place test singularity two in here. Now you can see some sparklies inside the test uh, chamber. Oh yeah, this uh, ME controller is now, the, the controllers are red, um, and I'm pretty sure what that means is that it doesn't like that there's two controllers in the network, so let's get rid of that. Yep, so you still, <laughs> you, you, you still can't have two controllers um, apart from each other, it doesn't like that. These are not uh, separate networks anymore. These are these are uh, the same network functionality. So I got rid of that controller, and it, it it likes it better now. Okay, so if I look at this terminal now, we can see that we can see our cakes, cookies, gold nuggets, iron nuggets, and our paintballs. So these two networks are now one and the same. So let's talk a little bit more about how this uh, about this link chamber and how to set how to set it up. Now, I have creative energy cells plugged into this thing with infinite energy. These things actually require quite a bit of power. They each require 200 AE per tick. That's the equivalent of 400 RF per tick or 100 EU uh, per tick from... Uh, from uh, I can't even remember the name of that mod. It's been too long. Industrial craft. All right. So 400 RF per tick to power one of these things. So that's 800 in total to power both of these things. Now... You need to have power set up at both ends in order for this link to be established. But once the link is established, you can cut power at one end. And it will continue, that side of the network will continue to draw power from the first side of the network. Okay? So, if power somehow dies at one end, as long as there's enough power to keep the link going, on the other end, it'll still work. Alright, you might want to rectify that pretty quickly, but it'll still work. So it shares everything. It shares power and it shares items. It's pretty cool and it'll work at any distance. Okay, you could be thousands of blocks away, tens of thousands of blocks away, and it'll still work. So on a server, for example, if you if you and uh, another dude and you become friends on the server, your bases are really really far away from each other, but you decide, you know what, we trust each other. We want to share our resources. If you've both got a AE system set up, if you each set one of these up and then get the quantum entangled singularities to each other. You can then set that up, and now you're sharing resources across a server. Okay? Pretty, pretty cool. So that's actually all we need to talk about as far as quantum mechanics goes. This thing isn't really all that complex, even though it's a pretty, pretty high-tech uh, little system here. 
uh, dealing with singularities and, and quantum mechanics and space time. Um, so it's pretty cool. Anyway, that's basically all there is for this episode because this system is not very uh, complicated. I can go in here and I can grab my paintballs out, you know, and I can go over here and I can get my cookies and cakes, and uh, you know, it's just that's that's what it does. So it makes what was once two networks are now one network. Pretty, pretty sweet. Now, of course, if power gets cut completely, or if the um, ME drives on one end get uh, cut off, you're obviously not going to be able to access them. So, you know, you need to be careful. And you're, you're, you need to maintain, you know, the actual stability of this system. But uh, there you go wireless ME networks. Just don't uh, don't neglect the power consumption. It's pretty good. Make sure you got enough power. So anyway, uh, stay tuned for future episodes of this. That's about all we got for here. Um, next episode is going to be a doozy. Uh, we're going to get Shiva in here. We're going to talk about the spatial I.O., which is pretty complicated. I don't know a ton about it, so uh, he knows more than I do about it, so we're going to get him in here. It's going to be a doozy. Spatial I.O. is pretty cool. It lets you actually uh, you know, save blocks in the world into a cell. So we'll talk about that next week. Um, stay tuned for future videos. I'm Sutton Leach, and I'm signing out.